racism. Maybe white people's worst invention. It definitely is, closely followed by this thing. It's been around since white people existed, but we really only like to acknowledge it every 50 years or so. Do you acknowledge it though? I mean, I've never been to a jubilee. This year has been one of those years, and when this guy shows up at a rally, you know shit is bad. But what's it like in New Zealand? Are we really an island paradise? Or has colonisation, white supremacy, and the persistent denial of our treaty obligations actually had a lasting effect? Because a quick survey of the country suggests that we are, in fact, racist, racist as, as fuck. fuck. Broadly speaking, yeah. how often do you think about the fact that you're Māori in New Zealand? Every day. Cool. <laughs> It's oh, clearly. But what I do you am. mean by that? Is it like you look in the mirror? Mir <laughs> <laughs> oh, pictorial, Alex. In the mirror. Uh. <laughs> Kiko kite a hau ki te mirror. Ah, he Maori. In the mirror. <laughs> Colonization. Yeah. Hit good me. or bad? <laughs> Real bad. Real bad. Can you imagine landing somewhere yeah. and going, this isn't working, you guys aren't doing it good. <laughs> Your life is not going well. It's like, yes it is. <laughs> no, 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 that's not how we want it. I mean, you may, no, but it happened all over the world. That a stunning right? impression. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, and so do you think that that colonising thing is in your DNA where you're going, I don't, I still think we've got it better. <sighs> I don't know, but like you saying, have I inherited colonial attitudes has for the first time ever made me feel like my innate confidence <laughs> <laughs> is because I'm a colonizer. Well, what do you think needs to happen? What needs I to think, start I think happening? absolutely structural and legislative change. That's how yeah. you change things. You change things on the top. I'll give you an example. Nobody used to sing the Māori National Anthem, eh? Mm. But the change came when Helen Clark let it be known to sporting organisations that if they weren't going to sing it in Māori, she wasn't going to give them any money. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that yeah. either. Most people don't. If a decision is made from the top, you can, you can make change. And after a while, it becomes the norm. So everybody sings it now, eh? But we have this Pākehā system set up, right? Yeah. So do we as Māori assimilate into that system and then get to the top and then blow the roof off it? <laughs> or are Māori going to govern themselves? Yeah, the, you know, the, that like... question about how are we going to do it? Yeah. Um, change the power structure. You okay, change yeah, the power structure. That, doesn't it? But how do you do that? Like, how do you accomplish that? You every know? one of you, every one of you, every one of you, <laughs> everybody's watching, make me president <laughs> of the country. OK. Yeah. There you go. I'm in. Did you look to Māori for guidance in your job? We had good people in the in the organisation, mm. you know. I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Um, Please don't be. Well, if you've got no Māori on your governing board of an organisation called the Human Rights Commission, I'd say you've got a problem. Yeah. Wow, absolutely. Uh, of course you do. Yeah, I'm just like, duh, duh, <laughs> everyone. Like, of course, I mean, that's how I feel about all of it. Yeah. I found it really strange that the Chief Commissioner at the time determined that my role was around migrants. Right. Everyone non-Māori. Ah, OK. So there was an Indigenous Commissioner, but she was only part-time. But, <laughs> I mean, I genuinely believe Holy there should shit. be an Indigenous Commissioner and a Race Relations Commissioner or a Race Relations Commissioner who is qualified to do both. Yes. Do you feel more Māori or more Pākehā? That's a great question. Thank you so much. I think I feel that's more the Māori because it's the part I feel like I need to work on more. Like, being Pākehā is kind of easy. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's the chillest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Colonisation is just such a hard sell to the general population. Ain't nobody putting, like, one in 180 years, you know, worth of trauma together. Yeah. But it's a trickle-on effect of back in the ra, back in the days, yeah. they took our land and then they took our language, our culture, our way of life, um, mm -hmm. our own medicinal practices. And when we talk about intergenerational trauma, the impacts of that still pass on. Because it's all good to say we commit to Te Tiriti yeah. Waitangi, but I can probably count on my hand five MPs and maybe 
10 or 20 other people in the upper rungs of government that understand how to apply te tiriti in practice. Is there currently an Indigenous Commissioner? No. So the government won't fund enough money to have a full-time Indigenous Commissioner? Why won't they do that? They don't care, <laughs> us. The clear difference between National and Labour is that National stabs you in the front. When Labour wants it, they go, oh, hide in my, hide in my, hide in my, in the back. I think there's some of the things that aren't happening in our society that Labour could change instantly. They talk about, oh, we could do this, but we, we haven't got this. Mm. The people are starving. Labour could change that instantly, mm. but they won't. Why won't they do it? Because uh, Labour thinking is based on traditional working class thinking, and the Māori struggle is simply a part of the working class struggle. Mm. It doesn't recognise the right of the Māori struggle to be its own independent struggle. Not that National does. Well, how do you feel about Ihu Matau? Like, do you think that could have been handled better? Um, you know, it is the bastion point of our time. Yeah. It's just so dire that this far on from the foreshore and seabed is the same behaviour repeating itself and politicians or leaders, like, not stepping up and making those movements actually reinforces an idea in the public that Māori are being unreasonable or that they can't be worked with. Can't be trusted. They're going they to do it again. This yeah. is just the first. It'll be your house next. You know, like, that's how yeah. people feel. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a great fan of Jacinda's, but you're right. Yeah. Of anyone in politics you'd expect to turn up to Hamato, it yeah. would be her. Yeah. We see her as, like, this young, woke, forward-thinking Prime Minister, and we're kind of, like, so grateful that she exists that then we don't challenge her necessarily on yeah. the shortcomings, but there has been, like, a consistent shortcoming. Yeah. of the Labour government as well, especially, Absolutely. to be like, yeah. we're all pro Māori, we want good things for Māori, and it's like, cool, here's a Māori issue, show up. Uh, it's very complicated. <laughs> very complex, there's lots of stuff going on behind the scenes. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> but that's the same thing with, like, we were talking about Helen Clark, is, like, we both really admire her, but when you look at the foreshore of seabed and you read that, you go, well... <laughs> well, they're appearing, appealing to the populace who are predominantly white. Right. Pākehā. Helen Clark was scared she was starting to lose her Pākehā vote. So she decided, I've got to put the stake in this den somewhere and say, I'm not going to back down to Māori every time. She chose the foreshore and seabed. Fuck. Oh, man, I loved it. I loved Why? it. Why? No, no, I think it was good for the country, good for the country. So, a bit like the Springbok tour. The support from one another for a common kaupapa. Mm was great, it was, was the birth of the Māori Party. I think what Māori did in response to what she did was wonderful. The New Zealand government's supposed to have a national action plan to end racism, and there isn't one, by the way. Fucking and that's, hell. You know, there should be one. Because yeah. I don't think institutional racism is going to spontaneously stop. <laughs> And that's the current plan, you know, spontaneous <laughs> stopping of racism. So we need people to commit to some actions. Yeah. We need a plan. What's the hold-up? I don't know, because me and my mate Tim, we wrote a plan. Because <laughs> you don't have to use our plan, but we've certainly done some of the intellectual work about what should be in it. I think that we like to think that we're doing well with human rights. And I get that we don't have people being tortured, to the best of my knowledge, in our yes. country. And I get that we're not on the same scale as some of the other countries. Mm. But I think any racism is a problem for us. We don't Less need any. We don't need yeah. any, quite yeah. frankly. <laughs> what, what can't you say when you're in the role of Race Relations Commission? Well, I think you can't call people racist. You know, you've got to what? be... Um, that was one <laughs> of the things... Surely that's your number one thing you get to do! <laughs> no, no. The minute yeah. you call someone a racist, well, that's... You've, you've stopped the conversation there and then. And what amazes me about people is they're more concerned about being called racist than what they did or said. Most of the people that wrote to complain to me, personally, 99.9% .9 of those people were Pākehā. Oh who God. thought that I'd gone to the dark side. Dame Susan DeVoy, my wife and I used to really admire you. Oh. It's frustrating, cos what can you do to change it? Another simple one. If you were to send a signal to every television station and radio station that we will pull your licence unless your on-air people pronounce Māori, perfectly, yeah. within five years, everybody would be listening to this beautiful Māori on all of our media and thinking that that was normal. I was a Moz girl girl and the Tyree Plains is how you pronounce Tyree. So, so, sorry, Nikki, what are you saying? 
there's, there's no Tai Eri and there's no O Amaru. You know, have you got a lot of Maori in you too, Marcus, or something? Well, being, we don't talk like that down here. But even that woman, you know, you'd argue that she's an idiot or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but she still thinks that. And her children probably think that. And yeah. her children's children think that. And when Pākehā people are shocked, that kind of offends me too a little bit. Pākehā people go, oh, my God, how could she say that? It's so mm. awful. It makes me feel like they're denying that it's everywhere. Yeah. It's the same with Christchurch. When people were putting up hashtag this isn't us or whatever, mm. it was just like, oh, no, please don't pretend that this country isn't built on racism. A white guy legitimately gets a gun and kills uh, 50 Muslims and an admission from the police that they weren't even looking at white extremists, that all of this time they were only looking at Maori nationalists. Mm. And they were wrong. Six months later, they're launching these armed response units, and where do they end up? In Otara and Mangi. The response still shows that they are just as wrong. The murders of the people in the mosque, in some conversations, is the worst tragedy in New Zealand's history. Yeah. What we euphemistically call the land wars were effect cultural extinction. It was murderous. Mm. And you could say it was a war, but it was a war taken on in order quite straightforwardly to wipe out resistance. The importance of historical literacy in our own narrative is vital. You're right, Chris. Yeah. You okay? Do you want to play some squash? If I have to. That's mine! She won't run. Here's a hard serve. Oh, fuck. Ah! Here she is! Here she is! <laughs> oh, I got this one. Don't worry. Oh, oh, ah! Let. No, no. Stop cheating. Oh, wow! No, that would look bad. The optics of that aren't great. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Taranaki for a race relations event. Wow. And I had this... Yeah, it was really incredible. I love that. Yeah. I'm sorry you didn't get an invite. And I... Uh, <laughs> I was kind of more important that I was there. <laughs> So I had this conversation I wanted to talk to you because remember we were like, what is your dream world like in terms of like race relations in this country? Yeah. And so I asked these women who I was having dinner with who are Māori and they said sovereignty and then they said, but it would be better for Pākehā because it's like tikanga and like te ao Māori is all about like identity and Pākehā would actually have like a sense of that for the first time ever and I was like, fuck. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. But it's embarrassing to admit that, like, in order for that to be the first time that I went, that would be amazing. Previously, I had to be conceiving of it as a concession. And it was a good moment for me to be right. like, conceiving of it as a concession is white superiority. What's a terrible question that we can't answer in New Zealand to finish this conversation off is, what is our culture? Mm. You ask Parker, what is their culture? They can't answer it. Well, I mean, the culture we have is based absolutely on Western corporate theft, quite frankly, mm. and destroying humanity in search of, of profit and, and individual goals. And um, a good solid base in Māori tanga could change all of that. For so long, I feel like I've thought, oh, but I'm woke and I'm cool and I know what's up. <laughs> I've had all these conversations and been like, oh, you little bitch. But you know, it's good days because yeah. you act on it because you don't go yeah. like, nah, I'm, I'm right, or like, ah, oh, white tears. Um, <laughs> it's like being yeah. challenged and recognising where challenges come from. So you have some hope. I have to, because not to have hope and just be like, oh, this is all useless, is to give up on my mokopuna. Yeah. And I refuse that. I, I truly believe that within our generation, we can have fundamental change in the way that we do things in New Zealand. The levers for change are possible. We can yeah. change things within our generation. And I, I'm like, well, stand by that. Otherwise, we might as well um, stop breathing kind of thing. Got something for ya. So just, there yeah. You know, that is actually fair enough. In 
finally, is reverse racism a thing? No, it's not. Of course it's not. God. Jesus. I'm going to stop calling you out for it then. <laughs> Please. Yeah.